The only way you can be truly free is not only by willing your own freedom, but also willing the freedom of others. As the great Marcus Aurelius says, what we do in this life echoes into eternity. That the effects of the projects that you choose to engage in when you're alive live on long after your death. All of us approach the world from a particular perspective. We all look at the world through a very biased lens. What we should be focusing on is being more self-aware of what biases we have so that we can understand how they're shading the way we're viewing things. With every action you take or don't take, you are actively contributing to that story of history that's eventually going to be written down. I mean, in a sense, you are history unfolding, and that makes you at least partially responsible for whatever unfolds. You're never actually separate from the world out there on the sidelines. To be an ethical person is to will your own freedom and the freedom of others. But even if we lived in a world where everybody agreed on that synopsis, which we don't, the, the reality is that not everyone in this world is going to be an ethical person. The world is not a utopia. There's just going to be people out there that want to use other people, denying their subjectivity, denying that they're a being for itself, so that they can bring about some sort of selfish end that they have. When a person reduces other human beings to just objects, to just fodder for whatever ends they want to bring about, that's when things change from just an unfortunate obstacle in our way that we have to accept, like an earthquake, to a person or group oppressing another person or group, denying them of their subjectivity. And that tends to be when people get mad and feel emboldened to call for action. All throughout history, people who have been doing the oppressing have tried to sync up the group that they're looking to oppress with some interpretation of the natural world that makes it not oppression anymore, but just something we have to accept as a reality. Simone de Beauvoir would say that we should always be on the lookout for this kind of tactic being used. You have to look at the world, identify some person or some group that are actively being oppressed, and then you have to take action based on nothing but your own personal read on the situation. Simone de Beauvoir makes it very, very clear that this task you have ahead of you is not one to be taken lightly. That part of truly willing the freedom of others, rather than just feeling like you're willing the freedom of others, is to have an exhaustive level of self-awareness, an exhaustive education on these issues that you're dealing with. It's so easy to hear some points that somebody made one day that resonate with you, and then just spend the rest of your life reading thinkers that are in that immediate proximity that reinforce what you already think you know. No, we have to be vigilant. We, we have to understand that we have such an incentive to retreat from the true ambiguity of the world that if you ever have something that you think you've totally figured out, be highly skeptical of that. Take another look at it. Again, truly willing the freedom of others requires this radical self-awareness and honesty with ourselves. It even requires us to examine the actual methods we're using to bring about the freedom of others, and then consider whether or not we could be doing more towards the cause than we are right now. To Simone de Beauvoir, it's not enough to just feel like we're willing the freedom of others. Change is hard. Change is a campaign against competing interests. It takes work. It, it takes real sacrifice. But more than anything, it takes a radical acceptance of the ethics that emerge when you realize the true extent of the ambiguity of this world we live in.